art is a very personal thing, uh, 100% of the time. And it might not seem like it sometimes, because you have a lot of artists who are, um, so set in the ways of standing in opposition to convention, or making a statement about, uh, about, you know, something that exists within the media. Um, that art is still very personal, because the way that you interpret art is personal as well. And because it's such a personal thing, we find a wide array of personal issues being addressed in every medium. Uh, something that you get a lot is about interpersonal relationships with other people. It's most common, you know, songs about lovers, or your friends, or your parents, or, you know, what have you. Um, something that I think is uh, grossly underrepresented in popular music is the relationship between an artist and his domestic animal. Um, you hear it sometimes. It's not something that you hear a lot of in music. Um, and when you do, it's you know kind of a hidden gem. I I can't I can't think off the, of the off the top of my head of a, uh, a top forty song about somebody's pet. But um, you know there there have been times when it has occurred. And like everything else, the emotions associated with the pet. <coughs> are presented in a way that is unique to the creator of the work. Uh, Venetian Snares, Songs About My Cats, is one example that springs to mind. You, you, you don't associate that album with emotions of, of love or caring about, about cats, but it's cats played a role in the creation of that record. What I have here is a, uh, a purchase that I made today. This is uh, Eyes Like Saucers, Pomily Tribute to a Dog. Uh, Eyes Like Saucers is the moniker of Jeff Knopf, who played in, let me see, I can't remember, I just did the research on this. I'll get there. Uh, I believe it's... O-Dog, that's right, okay, I'm sorry about that. O-Dog, who were a psychedelic rock outfit, and uh, Mr. Knock, Eyes Like Saucers, played Farfisa uh, organ in that band. Um, and the Farfisa organ is something that's commonly associated with more Eastern-sounding music, uh, Indian music, uh, and that kind of thing, because it, it has this very distinct sort of snake charming timbre to it. Um, and so the the Farfisa is very prominent on this album. It's the it's at the forefront of this record sound. Um, and that gives you know, that gives it a very distinctly Eastern sound. But what separates it from kind of that organ music Eastern style that in my opinion is frequently not all that interesting to listen to because it's been so kind of washed out and, and, and rehashed and it's kind of become a, a stereotype at this point. Um, but Eyes Like Saucers on Parmalee, he makes use of this very lo-fi production style and it doesn't make the Farfisa sound, you know, kind of do 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 No, it's, it's, it's very droney. Um, it, it's, it's not, it's not as melodic as it is kind of rumbling. Um, you know, it, you think of stuff like Earth or Sun, who, the guys, you know, opened for Sun before with this stuff, but it, you have that kind of wavering tone, that kind of distorted low tone that you're getting from the Fofisa here. And it's interesting, you know, I, you know, doing research, I thought I actually learned a lot about this dog. Uh, this dog right here, Parmalee, died in 2008. This record, not new, was released in 2009. So this, this is in fact a tribute 
to a fallen friend, and you start to wonder, as you're listening to this record, where that comes into play, because it doesn't sound like a tribute to a dead dog. Uh, it, it doesn't sound particularly mournful. It's downbeat. Uh, it's not a it's not a happy record much of the time. Um, but you don't really get the feeling that it's about you know this this guy's dog that he loved that died. Um, and I think that that has a lot to do with you know the the personal interpretation of the experience and the personal interpretation of the music and how he chooses to communicate uh, those feelings through sound. That's idiosyncratic to the creator, whatever. There is one track on here that I'll get back to at the end. Um, but beyond the Four Feast Oregon, uh, you know, it's, it's very Eastern sounding. Um, but not not in the conventional way, not what pops to your mind when you think Eastern music, you know, it's not chanting, and it's not, it, it's not Buddhist monk stuff. Um, there is chanting here, but the timbre of the chanting, the way that he affects his voice through the chanting, doesn't sound terribly forced. He doesn't double track his voice to make it sound bigger, like you hear in a lot of that kind of thing, like Sun is known for doing. Um, he doesn't, you know, he doesn't death growl to try and, and get that, uh, that throat singing timbre that's so popular in so many American subgenres now. He just kind of lets it out, you know, he, it's, it's almost kind of a moaning, uh, even that was too low. Uh, it, it's more like Western pop singing without the lyrics that we're hearing. Also on display here is, you know, the lo-fi production lends itself to imperfect capturing of, of the Farfisa organ. Um, so you'll get a lot of, you know, the, the clicking of keys on here sometimes, which I think is a great sound as a lo-fi fan. I don't, I don't think it's going to appeal to everybody. I think some people might think it's kind of annoying. I liked it. Um, and, you know, other percussion on here is there's, there's these tones that we kind of associate with ritual chants. These kind of rattling, ringing, shaky percussion, kind of like a tambourine, uh, or, or finger cymbals or something like that. But, again, they have a distinctly Western flavor that kind of separates it. And I think what we have here on this record is a very profound mixture of of East and West. And the sounds come together in a way that, you know, is, you know, you can, its influences are clear, but it's, it's entirely all its own. Um, which is something that I think is respectable. Now, for the most part, what you have on this record is that, that a melodic kind of droney Forfisa organ. Um, the last track on here, which is entitled Forpermally, uh, which is the only track title on here that makes a reference to this this dog, who we have in this image in the back here, uh, we have this dog, we have these candles lit over here, and we have the organ in the background here, uh, what looks like could be a set list or track list or something on the ground here, which I think, you know, and these, these hardwood floors here, I think that this, this is an image that I think surmises this album pretty well, because you have this dog, you have this kind of eastern imagery with these candles, you have, I, I, I think it suits it very well, and, and also a very lo-fi aesthetic on the back, but anyway. Last track on this record is called Four Parmalee, and the production kind of muddled on that track, which, depending on your taste, may or may not appeal to you. Um, but it's the most melodic, you know, he, he uses the organ in a very understated way on that track. The organ does not lead the track. There's a, there's a piano line, there's a, there's a vocal melody on that track, and when that track starts, it's instantly sad, you know, uh, you, you're going from kind of letting these organ tones wash over you, 
to suddenly this this piano breaks through and this vocal melody breaks through and it's just it sounds very very kind of hurt but there's a lot of nostalgia too and you you can almost conjure these images in your mind as you're hearing this music of this this guy playing with his dog on a sun-drenched day somewhere um, but at the same time you're very conscious of the fact that those days are gone uh, this dog is gone that sun-drenched day is gone and you can you can hear that you know you can hear the creator of the work singing through trying to recreate it trying to have it come back but it's just it's below the rest of the mix it's below the sun drenched day it can't be heard and if it could it wouldn't matter <laughs> it's still sad you know you can't you can't identify the lyrics on this song but you don't need to the melody is enough to convey the emotion and i think that's really the big emotional takeaway for this record um you know i don't want to give it a star rating or anything because really i was hoping it would be good that's what i bought it for i didn't buy a record to review but i have to say i enjoyed it it's it's a high seven maybe a 7.8 out of 10. um i wish that maybe there had been a bit more sonic variation on here. Um, it's it's especially if, if you don't like the sound of, of the organ, which I don't blame you in the slightest. If you don't, um, I I think it's going to be a bit frustrating to a lot of listeners who want something that's more emotional, or more stark, and definitely if you're looking for something more finely honed, <laughs> this isn't for you. Um, the organ is very well arranged and thought out, but there's other tracks on here, there's percussion, uh, that seems to be almost kind of an afterthought, but in, in a raw emotive way, to me, is how I interpret it. Um, but, you know, if, if you want something that's clean and refined and sonically and emotionally varied, you're not going to find it here. You are going to find a lot of really lovely timbres on here, and on the on the last track, you're going to find yourself being emotionally blown away, blown away, if you have a soul at all. So that is Eyes Like Saucers, permanently tribute to a dog. I'd recommend it highly, especially if you're a fan of lo-fi or Eastern folk music. Have a good night.